Hello my inspirations and welcome to Inspirational by Marie. If you are new to this platform, I welcome you with love. We are a family here, so please get involved. Today we have an interesting topic. We're going to be discussing five red flags to look out for in a relationship whilst dating. But before we get into that topic, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, let's get into it. So, red flag number one, the person's treatment and behavior to people in general. So I'm talking about, let's say you're in a restaurant and you are ordering food, the way they speak to the, the um, waitress, the way they speak to that person that walk pa past them or but walk by them. I'm talking about those type of things. I'm saying even the person on the bus, you know, talking about the person who is in the store or the shop assisting you with whatever it is you're buying. Look at the way they're treating these people around you, even if they don't know them. In fact, it's probably even better to look out how they to look at the way they're treating people that they don't even know. This is very, very important because best believe if you see something in their character that you're thinking, wow, you was a bit harsh there. Why did you speak to the waitress like that? That means that they could potentially do that to you. And the reason why I'm saying that is because if you haven't actually seen it in their character so far, it means that it's a choice. So it's very important that we're looking at the way they are treating other people. I personally, it puts me off when, like, if I'm talking to a guy or I'm getting to know a guy and he's only nice to me <laughs> and he treats everybody else like rubbish. That is not real. That's actually fake. And he's only doing that, to be honest, I feel, to actually win you over and not show you his true colours so that, yeah, you actually might fall in love with him or her i'm talking to the fellas as well you might fall in love with the person but really they're not really that person they're acting up and when they get comfortable with you and they decide that okay now i've got you now they're going to start showing their true colors so it's better to know somebody who they are it's better when we're getting to know people be yourself you understand if you know that you're not a very nice person to people that's something that we have to work on in ourselves not necessarily oh just because you're in front of this person you're going to try and put your best foot forward or your best shoe forward like no your true colors your true colors will come out in the long run let's keep it real out here on these streets all right so <laughs> red flag number two lack of consistency mm -mm 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 -mm. to me consistency means safety and security right with no second guessing okay now this is so important when you're getting to know somebody if they are not consistent to be honest with you, I don't know what... In life, consistency is so important. We know that. With consistency, we're working at something. We're doing it sometimes daily, okay? Often, right? Let me use the word often. Because we have a goal in mind. That's the reason why we do things for, you know, when we want to reach a goal, or when we want to reach a certain level of success, or your relationship, even your relationship with God, it takes consistency, you know, to see something come out of it you have to do something working on it a lot of the time right so if someone's trying to get to know you and they're not consistent this is a quite a, it's a big big put off and a big turn off it just shows they're not serious enough i have to put it in that way because there's really it shows they're not serious enough about you um about the relationship that they want to actually have they're not really taking it seriously in my opinion okay now when you're dealing with somebody that isn't consistent you're talking about things like oh i'm gonna call you on monday um but they call you on friday and i'm talking about a continuous pattern we are all human beings please let's be um aware of the fact that some things may come up but even in that are they willing to tell you that that's happened are they willing to tell you that oh sorry something has cropped up and apologize do you understand there's a way to do things also that you know that respect that is due so anyway back to consistency so they call you they said they're going to call you on monday but they call you on friday and this keeps happening inconsistency i'm going to pick you up from work um on tuesday they don't they're not there and they've done this more than three times four times five times do you understand like this is somebody who is not consistent. 
and to me they're not serious okay so it's more than just being consistent like i said are they informing you to let you know some things do happen let's give ourselves that grace and let's un be understanding to ourselves but honestly speaking when someone is not consistent please let's let you know maya angelo said okay when someone shows you who they are the first time believe them okay there's many times that we've seen signs and people and we know that mm, this person is not really into me but you might just feel like oh whatever I, I might not have nobody to talk to right now so let me just continue to talk to them no like we are better than that as people our value is more important and at the end of the day when somebody is really into you because i do believe that the people i'm speaking to are very great people and i believe that we're all special so i'm saying no like i'm gonna tell you that you're too good for that when someone is not interested in you they can go about their business it doesn't mean you don't have to be friendly with them anymore but at the end of the day i don't have nothing to say to you because we're supposed to be working towards a goal here and and if you're inconsistent we're not going to get there okay <laughs> red flag number three avoiding introduction who is he hiding you from who is she hiding you from <laughs> After a while of talking, dating, after some months, I believe it's necessary for that person, if they're trying to take you seriously, to introduce you to people that are important to them, for you to become a part of the family, for people to know who you are, you know, for you not to be hidden, basically. So I'm saying, after like a couple months, if this is not happening, question yourself and question that relationship and question how serious this person is about you or better yet, do they have a side chick or a side man? Because at the end of the day, sometimes we could be talking to people, thinking everything is going all right, but really they've got a secret life we don't even know about. So even if they are introducing you to people, and this is quite important as well. Sorry about that noise, guys. It's the ice making machine. Um, yeah. If that person is not actually introducing you to somebody, um, we have to question that. Now... It could be that they're introducing you to people, but the people that are the people that they're introducing you to are not even important people like that. And I'm, I'll tell you what I mean by that. So, are they introducing you to their associates? They have a best friend, but they're only introducing you to their associates. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Like, it has to be someone of significance to them for that to be qualified, in my opinion, as a decent introduction. Because, like I said, it could be, you know. I don't know, a level whereby they're not actually taking that seriously or they've got a secret life. You know, this might not be the case in all cases, but I do think that if somebody is trying to get to know you and there is a goal at hand, then yes, I definitely do believe that they should be introducing you to people that are important to them, not just anybody, okay? We all know that we have different people in our lives for different reasons. Sometimes we have people in our lives and they may be associates, some people are workmates, some people are best friends, you know? So there, is, there are different people in our lives. So even if they are doing that introduction, please make sure that, you know, the person is important to them. I think it really counts and it makes a difference, okay? So, red flag number four, what is the purpose of the relationship? So is this something that you have both discussed with yourselves? Do you know the end goal? Do you know what you both want out of this relationship? You may want marriage, that person may just want a companion, okay? Or someone to talk to daily. But they may not want marriage, they just may want a boyfriend or a girlfriend. So you already know at that point that you really don't have any business to get to know this person anymore. Do you understand where I'm coming from? There's no point of trying to go down that route because you're going to get hurt in the in the in the long run. You know, if you're saying you want to get to know somebody and they're saying they don't want what you want, don't force it either. It's not a personal thing. I don't think it is. Sometimes it may be personal, but that, that just means that that person wasn't for you in the first place. But quite frankly, don't force yourself on people because I've heard things where it's like, um, you want to get married, maybe the guy doesn't want to get married, or the girl wants to, um, or the guy wants to get married. Maybe the 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 guy, <laughs> the guy wants to get married, and maybe the girl doesn't. Okay. Now, maybe the person may come around, but I think it's time to step back and actually wait and see, and maybe go for somebody who actually does want to have the same things you want to have. I think it avoids a lot of time wasting as well. 
um, and a lot of disappointment. Don't force yourself on somebody. Maybe that person might come back in two months and be like, you know what? That idea that you said about marriage, I know I didn't like it, but I think I'm liking it now. You understand? But ultimately, if this is not what the person wants, then that they're entitled to that. Red flag number five. What are the quality of, of, of the conversations that you're having with the person? So what are the quality of the conversations that you're having, okay? Now, if these are conversations that really don't mean, are meaningless, basically. Yeah, sometimes we're just gisting with our friends or gisting with our partners. And ultimately, you don't have to have meaning in everything. But I'm talking about, let's say, for example, you're, in, uh, you're at a party and you're in public with people and your partner or the person you're dating at the time is trying to act like you're you know, that you've got this great bond and they're talking to you, they're really loving on you, trying to act like you guys are close. But behind closed doors, when they pick up the phone to call you, there's nothing to say. <laughs> they, they don't have anything to say to you. They don't have anything meaningless to say, meaningful to say. It's just silence. What did you do today? Oh yeah, I did this, nothing, nothing. They don't really want to know the inner you. Do you understand? What are the quality? What is the quality of your conversation? Are they asking the right questions, man or female? When you're getting to know somebody, it's more than just oh, what happened in your last relationship or um, what are the best qualities that you think that people see in you. You understand? What's the best feature? All these things. I think there are meaningful conversations that you can also have with somebody, especially if you're going to build a relationship with this person and gonna be with them a long term. Ask them about their inner qualities. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ask them about things that actually really matter. Like I said, you will have days you're just gisting and jiving. That's fine. But ultimately, you really want to get to know your, your partner inside and out. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you want to ask, you want to be asking questions like, what is, what is your favourite um, book or things like that? What moves you? Um, what topics of, I don't know, society interest you? These might seem like boring topics, yeah, but actually, when it comes to, I believe, relationships, when it's just, you know, there needs to be a level of intelligence. It don't just go with the flow, you know. You're not somebody that would just be talking anyhow. Let the guy or the girl see value in you other than just the way you look or the, what you do for work, but let it be something, you know, um, asking about your family, asking about what type of um, upbringing they were from, you know, asking about what really, what their love language is, actually, that's a good one as well, what their love language is, you understand, I believe it's Gary Chapman that has a book on the five love languages, right, but asking them questions like this, different questions that may seem boring, I don't think they're boring, but I don't know, to some people may think they're boring, but they're, it's quite important, what are their hobbies, okay, things like that, I do believe that it builds a strong foundation when it comes to um, quality of conversation. It doesn't have to always be about, you know, oh, you look so this, you look so that. That's great, but it doesn't have to only be about that, is my point I'm making. So, when you're getting to know someone, you're dating someone, I hope that these three red flags have really helped somebody out there. And I'm going to be doing a part two. Let me know if you want me to do the part two on this and want to hear more about what I have to say. I really enjoyed this, doing this, <laughs> and I hope you're all inspired and blessed. So until next time, guys, don't forget to subscribe and press that notification bell. Mwah. Take care, bye.